Culture Show for those of us who were born a few years ago. Let's show those millennials all the things we know. Being old makes us wise. Sometimes we even go outside. We know about life before 1999. You haven't seen nothing yet if you haven't lived life pre-internet. Listen up, this is stuff you won't want to forget. Midlife Pop Culture Show. Hey, hey, it's Mr. G. This is the final episode of season one of the Midlife Pop Culture Show. Great to be here. This show's for the baby boomers. X generations, Y generations, Z generations, millennials. You'll all get something out of it. Here's one of our most favorite bits. This one's called... What's in the bag? One, two, three, four. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? That's me, too. No, any you to guess. What's in the bag? 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 Why don't you call and give a guess of what's in the bag? Ooh, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? <clears throat> we got our first caller for what's in the bag. Oh my goodness, it's long time caller Hi, Agnes. Mr. G. This is Agnes and my friend Gilda. Hi guys. Calling from the community. And we would like to play What's in the Bag. Absolutely. Mr. G. Grad your call okay. back. Mr. G. Yes. Uh, me and uh, Gilda Hard uh, recently went to uh, Burger King mm -hmm. and got the uh, new Impossible Burger. Oh. And let me tell you, Mr. G. It was fantastic. Oh. oh my God. Gilda Hart, of course, got the regular one and mm -hmm. I got the uh, Impossible Burger. Yeah. But let me tell you, Mr. G, it's impossible to pay for it. It's <laughs> almost $4 Whoa. for the Impossible Burger. Wh what? Oh my God. There was no coupons. It was nothing. If they want me to eat healthy, Mr. G, mm -hmm. they at least better put out a coupon for it, for God's True. sake. True. Why is it on the dollar menu? Mm -hmm. Anyways, Mr. G, uh, you're doing a fantastic job. Uh, we love your show. Me and Agnes and, and, and Gelda Hart here at the community. We love you, baby. And we think you're doing a great job. All right. So um, I hope I'm right. And uh, I did try yeah. uh, the new uh, dollar tacos. Yes. And they made me sick. Ooh. I almost threw up, for God's sake. <laughs> oh. oh, they're gross. Uh, anyways, uh, Mr. G, uh, we love you. And... Uh, uh, well, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Agnes. Uh, Agnes, Agnes, I couldn't agree. Hey, this is Ag Oh, Agnes, uh, it was good talking to you. Uh, okay, gonna have to call back again next week. Uh, Agnes, you uh, do bring up a valid point. Um, eating healthy should not be as expensive as it is. Um, for instance, th it is true, the Impossible Burger is four dollars and some change just for the whopper impossible burger shocking why don't they have it in the dollar menu like agnes said i would go pull in when i usually pull in and get a cheeseburger for a dollar fifty or something i would happily get i'd spend a dollar fifty so if i get the uh if i get the uh impossible whopper uh meal that's close to eight dollars I might as well go to Puritan back room and get the chicken tender meal for nine to ten dollars. Good point. And you, I agree, Agnes, you hit the nail right on the head. The tacos at the dollar tacos at Burger King. I brought a couple home from my wife uh, last week. And um, this is kind of what she said about it. She said, this is the grossest tacos that I've ever had. Burger King, you make me sad. These are the worst tacos that I ever had. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you, Burger King? A little improv for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have another caller. We have another. Oh, my goodness. And by the way, Agnes, you were correct. It was a uh, impossible burger. What's in the bag? Let's see if Tom knows. Hi, Tom. Tom? Hello. Hi. This is Tom Tomilson. Good to hear back from you, Tom. Viewer yep. of the Midlife Pop Culture Show. Mm -hmm. 
what I would like to say is I believe what is in the bag today is a very democratic, non-beef, Ooh. new, impossible burger wow. by Burger King. You, you are this correct. very democratic, all soy, mm. plant-based food. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a disgrace to the <laughs> USA. The impossible burger should be made of all American beef, I tell you. Mr. Mm. G? Yes. I believe, again, what's in the bag is the new Whopper. Wow. Impossible Burger. Wow. From Burger King. You this, could... again, is appalling. Uh. <laughs> this is Tom Tomlinson. Yes, Tom. Signing off. Well, Tom, uh, we went through this last show when you were nice enough to call. So now, Tom, you're saying that the imp- the veggie burger or the soy-based burger or plant-based burger Whopper is Democratic, whereas beef is more Republican. Kyle, your thoughts. I have not heard or tried the Impossible Burger, so I have no. But do you uh, feel? Do you feel that Democrats would would be more apt to eat the uh, the uh, if you're a vegan? Would you go to Burger King and get the Impossible Burger? Uh, looking at uh, some of the former presidents and stuff like that, yeah. they, uh, Mr. Clinton t- certainly enjoyed a, a burger or pizza. In his sure, time, sure. So I wouldn't say that uh, it has anything to do with. Uh, political things like mr tom was saying yeah wow uh that is something that's a very good point tom thank you for calling uh you are correct we're two for two um and someone new has just called uh confused carla hello confused yes um, hi this is uh confused carla hi carla thank you for calling a little confused about what your show is really all about me me too uh i like going to burger king Mm -hmm. and uh I mean, I'm confused. They have a, mm-hmm. they have regular hamburger. Yes. They have soy hamburger. Yes. I don't even know what a, what they're talking about. Yeah, it can be a bit much. Oh, yeah. Mr. G, can you straighten out a few things for me? I, I, I would like confused to try. Confused Carla wants to know, what the hell is going on with <laughs> Burger King? Why can't I just get a regular Whopper? You can. Why do I have to put soy in my burger? Well. Why do the red lights turn green? I... What happened to the yellow lights? Where's the coupons? Why am I on the planet Earth? Well, Carl, What's Carl, going easy, on? Easy, easy. Where am I? Who am I? Why am I calling you? <laughs> oh, this, uh, oh, is this the Midnight Pop Culture yes, Show? Yes, it is, Carl. If it is, yes. I don't want to be. I do want to be. I don't. Oh, this is confused, Carla. I'm so confused. <laughs> well, Carla. Uh, Bye. Carla, uh, I know when you've come, when the first time you call up a internationally famous show like the Midlife Pop Culture Show, you can get a little nervous, confused, Carla. I understand why you're confused. Let me just try to break it down for you like this, Carla. Okay? There's a big fad right now about plant-based foods, soy-based foods, and there's a lot of truth to the matter uh, of we should eat more plant-based foods. I think Burger King really, really stepped out of the uh, fast food box, if you would, by, I'm sure they spent millions and millions of dollars on this campaign, on the food itself, on the testing. And I think it's a, definitely a step in the right direction. But as um, uh, one of our ab- other viewers uh, called in, it shouldn't be as pricey, okay? It's soy based and it shouldn't be as pricey or double the price of a regular one if they really are concerned about making the, I'm sure, is it more expensive? I would think that a plant-based um, hamburger should be less expensive than a uh, cattle, than cattle or beef. But that's just uh, this humble man's opinion. Um, you're doing, fa- uh, we're doing fantastic. Let's move right around. So can Carla, it's okay. You sound really good. I'm glad you called next time, next week when you call. Let's take a deep breath, and we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit more. But thank you, confused caller, for calling. Oh, and finally, a last caller, wasted Willie, wasted Willie. How oh, the heck are you? Wow. Hey, man. wasted. This is wasted Willie. Nice, good. To have Mr. Hear from G. You? Yep. I believe what's in the bag today, man. Yep. Is a new, fantastic. Non beef, mm-hmm. very democratic. Oh, man. oh, I take it you're a burger from yeah. Burger King, the impossible burger. Mm. When I first bit into it, yep, 
I went, wow. <laughs> ah, a burger with no beef, man. Right. That blows my mind. Well, welcome to 2019, my, God, my Mr. Friend. G. Yes. I want an impossible burger right now. Yeah. Wow. Me too. And Mr. G, let me tell you something. Yes, you changed yes, changed my life. I know. Oh, wow. <laughs> Take it easy, Wasteland. Oh, Wilson. I'm working at Burger King now, man. Yeah. Oh, what happened to the sub it's shop? It's crazy. Right? It's mm. impossible. This is Wasted Willie. Yeah, man. With my guest on the fantastic Midlife Bob Goldie show. Well, man. thank you. See thank you later, G. Keep that, it fresh, baby. I'm I'm trying to keep it fresh, Willie. Thank you very much for calling. That was Wasted Willie calling one of our. Uh, uh, he calls in just about every show here, and talks to us. Um, so we have four. Everyone was correct today. That's a, that is a first time ever, Kyle, that people got all four of our callers. I can't believe this. I mean, got all. It was correct. Let's have the reveal. Boom. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The Impossible Burger. I looked it up online. It is soy-based. Uh, there was only one ingredient that I couldn't pronounce. <laughs> and I'm supposing probably that hopefully that's nothing terrible. Uh, four dollars and fifty cents. Let's take a look at it again. Let's take a look at the next slide, please. Okay, now that's the Impossible Burger, ladies and gentlemen. Um, does it look like a regular Whopper? Boy, maybe I should have had a picture of a Whopper, did a side by side comparison. But um, there it doesn't look bad. What's missing from that, of course? Next slide, please. Okay, there it is opened. Now, Burger King does give you a halfway decent slice of tomato. Not super thick. But again, my constant gripe about this is, where's my lettuce? Now, I was thinking about this on the way in. Since this is a plant-based food, do we really need the extra lettuce on top? Well, gosh darn it, I say yes. It looks good. It's good roughage. Hey, Kyle. Where's my lettuce? Where's my lettuce? All I got is a soggy piece of green. Where's my lettuce? I just got one soggy piece of green. Would it kill you to give me some more lettuce? Would it kill you? That was a kind of an easier song to play along to. That was Where's My Lettuce um, by the band Screamo. Uh, big fan of that band. Um, so, um, so I like my lettuce. Where is my lettuce, ladies and gentlemen? Unfortunately, the trip to uh, Burger King was not all fun and sunshine and plant-based food. Uh, let's take a look at those tacos that we talked about in the, in the past there. Let's take a look at those tacos. There they go. Okay, now the tacos... Dollar. Very disappointing. Uh, I think I got another picture of it there. Oh, whoa. Very, very. Look at that thing. That's a sad. It was spicy. I think the meat inside was tasted like the meat that like when somebody brought a Whopper back, they threw it in a big vat. And they put some uh, cayenne or chili powder in there and stuffed it into this. Uh, it wasn't even a taco shell. It was sort of like a. Jesus, even hot. It, it, it tasted like it tasted like crap, is what it tasted like. Uh, so, uh, big thumbs down to the dollar taco. Big thumbs up to the uh, Impossible Burger. We'll be right back and talk about dogs on the Midnight Pop Culture Show. Is a midnight. Culture show for those of us who were born a few years ago. Let's show those millennials. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play. What did cheap Mr. G spend 
on his trip to the flea market. Let's take a look at the flea market picture right here, Kyle. Let's take a look at that picture. There it is. Oh, a beautiful. I got there about 9.30. It ended up being about 90 degrees around noontime. I went there about 9.30. Uh, and this is what I get. It kind of just a beautiful, beautiful day at the flea market. Look at the sun's out. People selling their wares. So this is the first thing I ran into. A nice hat. Mmm. Now, Kyle, uh, I was a little uh, troubled about buying this hat, but I bought it. And I don't look good in a lot of things. Uh, but uh, this one seemed to fit me pretty good. All leather. Nice. Uh, there was a little bit of cushion underneath there. Some fur up at the very top. Kyle, what did I pay for that? I'm going to guess that the hat went for no, Kyle, $5. Kyle, let's uh, – oh, yes. The hat was $5. Correct. That's the asking price. The name of this bit is what did cheap Mr. G pay for that? What's your guess? I'm going to go with – Two dollars. Close. One dollar, Kyle. One dollar. One dollar. One dollar, baby. Let's go to the next one. I'm feeling good. I went and I saw this. Whoa! The Groove Tube Red Lava Lamp. Now, uh, this I guess they're kind of making a comeback, but this is a vintage one in the box. Uh, 19 circa 1985, 90. From what they, well, from what the woman said there, her daughter. Had this at UNH in the mid 90s. So uh, I'm sure there's a lot of stories that this lava lamp could tell. Uh, asking $5, Mr. G paid. Ooh. And again, name of the bit. Che <laughs> what did cheap Mr. G spend this at the flea market? Your Mr. G, I'm going to guess that you spent mm -hmm. $3 on this. Kyle, $1. What? One, one, one dollar. I said to her one dollar, and she said, "Oh, I'm having such a terrible day." Oh, oh, okay. Let's move right on. Okay, now, Kyle, I didn't buy this, but do you know what this is, you millennial? You. This would be a original uh, camera. It is a slide projector. Now, what this was used in, they had. And I remember this from from elementary school and junior high, and sometimes in high school, um, a film strip would go into it, and you would have to manually turn it as a picture was shown on it. So I'll give you an example. And they always had the uh, the teacher's pet was always asked to be the turn person. If you would, you got to stand next to the camera, and when you heard beep, you would turn it. Millennials, you know, you don't know what I'm talking about. Baby boomers, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, can you go back to that one again there? So uh, what, what happens was they would show us a picture of, it would be like, beep, Abraham Lincoln was a very good president who wanted to free the slaves. Beep, and then you would turn it. Abraham Lincoln wore a big hat. Beep, Abraham Lincoln was one of our most favorite presidents. Beep, and it went on and on and on from there. Uh, that's when it was called the Audio Visual Club would come deliver that. And I uh, remember that I was never chosen. Maybe that's why I'm scarred to be the Turner um, during these film strips. Uh, <laughs> little memory road for you, baby boomers. Next one, please. I didn't buy it. I walked by and I said, wow, look at that. Next one. Tandem bicycle. Did not buy it. Kai, what were they asking for that? Schwinn circa 1970s tandem bike. I'm going to throw out $20 for it. They wanted $125. Now, now, who in their right mind buys anything for $125? Who brings $125 to the flea market? I go to the flea market with $10. $10. That was, I, what a beautiful bike there, though, huh? Look at that thing. I mean, that's, 1970s. I, I, don't, I don't know what the thing was, but, boy, that's more of a collector. Has that chain even been uh, oiled at I, all? Oh, I, I don't in, know. In 40 years? I, I, <laughs> probably not. Next picture, please. That's interesting, though. Didn't buy it. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Now, this is an this is a trunk that was a gentleman who was helping clear out a uh, old church slash school, Saint Somethings. I forget what it was. And I've been looking for a nice solid trunk like this. This is a really old trunk. This is from the fifties and sixties. Rubberized top, rubberized bottom, uh, and it's uh, it's a beautiful trunk. Uh, if you know anything about trunks, <laughs> uh, it's beautiful trunk. He wanted thirty dollars for this. So you can put a lot of junk in the trunk here. You huh? can put. A, well, I wanted to put some wood in the trunk for this winter. I've been looking for a trunk to put wood in in my house. When you bring wood in, 
and uh, I've been seeing these all over the place. Uh, he wanted thirty. Uh, online is going for like two, three hundred dollars. What did I pay for it, Kyle? What did cheapest did you pay? Did you did you buy it? I did buy it. You did buy it. I did it. not buy it and for thirty dollars. I've been. I'm gonna give you a hint. It's not thirty dollars, and it wasn't one dollar. Like you got the past two things for. What Thank you. you. All right. Okay. I, I'm, I'm glad it wasn't one. I'm gonna go with fifteen. Very close. Ten dollars, Kyle. That's how's that, bro? You were up to twelve dollars. Twelve dollars. Next picture, please. I'm feeling real good about my flea market experience now. Now this gentleman had thirty bowling balls, thirty pins. Candle pin pins in this beautiful. Can you go to the next, uh, the next picture there? Look at that, Kyle. In the next picture. Oh, you know what this is, millennials? This is called a scorecard. Where you, have, you just have to write your score in and figure it out yourself. Ooh, we're not good at math, these millennials. These days, well, you so know why? Because it not work out. You know why you're not good at math? Because you didn't have this when you were growing up. This taught you basic math skills. Next picture, please. Okay, that's a, that's the candle pin itself, still famous in the East Coast game. Yeah, and the next picture. See, look at that. That's a that's a. I think this rack is what holds the bowling balls. Is the keeper of the whole thing. Um, and the next one. Bucket of balls. He had thirty candle pin balls. And was that was that the last one on that? That's it. Uh, now, let's go back again. Um, I was not. Uh, I was here with one of my friends. And he um, was interested in the bowling ball set. All right? He was interested in the bowling ball set. How much did he pay for 30 pins, the complimentary pad of scorecards, the rack, and 30 balls? What did he pay for that? Which I think is the deal of the summer. Next to my trunk, of course. I'm going to say that it was $25. Very close. If you're at home now watching, throw in your throw throw in your guess. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Thirty dollars he received. All this and these are real candle pins. These are real bowling balls. Uh, I, I'm happy to say. Can we come on back here before uh, we went? We went back to uh, my house and we played candle pin bowling down my driveway. It has a nice slight pitch to it, and uh, it was fantastically fun. And uh, one of my friends came over after, and I showed him this, who's into antiques, and he instantly offered him $150 for it. Uh, he, so this was a great part. This is, a, I think, and all day, as they would say, uh, $300 at a, at a nice shop for all that. Uh, so that was my day at the flea market. Um, if you ever go to a flea market, bring your dog. I brought my dog. I got this little dog that we're going to talk about uh, when we come back from break. Uh, I brought her. I was a little bit concerned when I brought the dog to the flea market. She's a small little thing, uh, but she did great. She had a great time. I warned her. I said, Luna, when we go to the flea market, we might be confront some big dogs. We weren't there for maybe five minutes, and around the corner, she kind of face to face. This was like six foot Great Dane, and she kind of like fell back. <laughs> but that was a big scare. Okay, uh, we'll be right back. Uh, we'll be right back to uh, finish up with uh, with this quick song. Bye bye. Hello, we're back. Midlife Pop Culture Show. We're back. We're going to talk about my dog Luna now and dog lovers everywhere. This one goes out to people who love dogs, save dogs, know a dog, has pet a dog. This one's called It's a Dog's Life. Okay, can we get that first picture of the dog up there? This is my dog Luna. And this is a beautiful silhouette of her in her favorite sitting spot. Um... I got this dog about uh, six months ago, rescue dog, and she's doing great because it could have went either way for this dog. It's a dog's life. Either it's good or it's really bad. Now it's a dog's life. Either it's good or it's really bad. Now it's a dog's life. It's bad, it's really sad, it's a dog's life. Every dog should have a life like this. Dog's life, dog's life, dog's life. He's living the dream, it's a dog's life. Dog's life, dog's life, living the dream. Dog's 
spelled backwards. It means God. It's a dog's life. It's a dog's life. It's a dog's life. It's a dog's life. Life. Dog's life. Dog's life. Living the dream. It's a dog's life. It's a dog's life. Dog's life. Living the dream. It's a dog's life. Go to a shelter. Get a dog, they'll give you unconditional love. All right. Hey, not bad, not terrible. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to, to be here. It's a pleasure to come back and see it again. Tell your friends about the Midlife Pop Culture Show. Live good. Live every day. Be nice to each other. Play some things forward. Just little things. Okay, before I came in here today, there was a woman waiting at the pay, PayPal thing there. You had to pay to park on Manchester streets. I gave her my first slip. Could have think I gave her the lottery. You know, it was a dollar. Gave her my first slip, gave her another one. She, she was stunned. Uh, just little things like that. Be good to you people. Be good to everybody. Thank you, my family, for putting up with me. And thanks for Kyle for playing along. It's the Midlife Pop Culture Show. We'll, we'll see you again. It's a midlife pop culture show for those of us who were born a few years ago. Let's show those millennials all the things we know. Being old makes us wise. Sometimes we even go outside. We know about life before 1999. You haven't seen nothing yet if you haven't lived life pre-internet. Listen up, this is stuff you won't want to forget. Midlife. Pop Culture Show.